So uh, three years ago today, I was held against my will inside of a hospital that illegally trespassed against my rights. Uh, people that know my story should help me out, but I think a lot of people have withheld from doing that because of uh, a lot of the connections with certain people in power in uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, whether it be people not wanting to take responsibility for their actions <clears throat> but it's important that you don't put your hands and force your will upon other people uh, when they never threatened anyone and when, when they have never, when they weren't doing anything wrong. Uh, that's used as a power move with people that they don't agree with and they want to control. So they say that this person's crazy. And it's not all cases, but in, some, in my case, yes. Uh, my little sister uh, did it. She said I lied. She said I threatened to shoot her with a shotgun, which I never did. I just want to remind everybody about this. Um, during this time, I left the state of Alabama because they were trying to force medicate me. And I, granted, I never did anything wrong. Uh, and then here's the deal. Uh, I went to North Carolina to get away from this corrupt system because I didn't have a lot of friends at the time, people that didn't really want to stick up for me. I was, felt like that was my option um, to escape this tyrannical a uh, actions. Uh, Judge Allison Boyd, I believe she bears some responsibility. Although my sister lied on the petition, I believe she's responsible for using her authority in a way that's not correct and it's a, it's a hazard to society. Um, the, I believe the hospital is responsible for what they did because they, um, I don't think they used their discernment. I think they were tied up in like protocols and systems and policies, ordinances, whatever you want to call it, and justifying their actions. Uh, I think it's very, needs to be audited. Um, I uh, can't remember if they forced me to take the vaccine or not. I remember telling them I didn't want it, but uh, that place needs to be investigated. Now, a lot of people say, oh, well, it's your family's fault. You know, oh, it's Margaret Ann's fault because she lied about you and said that uh, you know, that you threatened to shoot her when you never did. And, uh, yes, it is her fault, but it's also the hospital's fault and the judge's fault because, uh, during this process, I was able to have an eyewitness account of the actions going on at this hospital. I mean, I remember being in there and being like, wow, like I believe God sent me here to expose this crap and this needs to be investigated. So I do plan on coming back to Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, I will be outside the Shelby Baptist Hospital at some day uh, testifying about how that was not right what they did legally within my rights uh, if they want to lock me up and uh, exert their tyrannical will against me from speaking freely. That's their choice. You know, they're responsible for their choices. I'm responsible for mine. Uh, but I feel like I have the responsibility to speak up against this. Uh, as you know, I'm not a coward and, uh, I'm not into slandering anyone. That's what's so, uh, psychologically, uh, crazy about this whole situation is I was lied about, kidnapped, forced, medicated, had to leave the whole state all the while my mom passed away and my older sister and parts of my family got my mom to sign a piece of paper hours before she died. Uh, yes, I still got a third of the inheritance, but there was value that was kind of like swindled in my opinion, uh. I mean, I could easily talk to anyone and make it, it pretty much makes perfect sense. Uh, there was a 40 acres that I was allotted that I was supposed to get uh, throughout my life talking to my mom. Hey, would you please leave me my land, by the way? I know I don't hunt down there all the time like Bubba, but I do have an interest in that. And I would love to have that. Um, you know, I, I don't want you to sell my portion. Please keep my portion, please. Well, I remember having this conversation with my mom and it would go down like this. It'd be like, okay, Andrew, well, we're trying to sell it together. Uh, but, um, you know, if we sell it, you know, that's my decision. I'm like, yes, mom, but don't sell it to Bubba because I want to keep my portion. You know, I want to have my, that land for me. Uh, you know, I, I have an interest in hunting down there and shooting deer, although I wasn't raised doing it that much. I mean, yeah, I shot my first deer down there and I was like 12 or something, but it's just like, you know, this whole thing like traumatized me and I was in a process of healing during this time when it happened, which made it that much worse. And I do have uh, memory issues. Um, I had a concussion in high school, so it just makes it that much worse what happened to me because I do suffer with some ailments, uh, but I'm not mentally ill by any means. Uh, I mean, technically everyone's kind of mentally ill, I guess from that side of things, because we're not perfect. You know what I mean? It's like 
Do all of our neurotransmitters work perfectly? Please raise your hand. Sure, yeah, you're not perfect. And so my point is, like, this is very traumatic what happened. And there's a lot of people that uh, are not wanting to speak up because they'll be liable. You know, it's like everyone in Bessemer, Alabama that owns private property, a lot of them know each other, but it doesn't give people the right to treat me wrongfully. And I feel betrayed. I feel mistreated in this whole situation. I mean, no one's perfect, right? Like I've made a lot of choices uh, in my life that were not um, best decisions for me. And, uh, but it just doesn't give people the right to do what they did to me. And then to think that I can't, ex then to think that, you know, people say that, oh, you're slandering, you know, oh, you better be careful talking about that judge. Well, you know, who's going to do it if I don't, you know what I mean? And uh, I don't want anything. I just wanted what, what was promised, what I was supposed to get. Like, I'm not even looking into some mega lawsuit, but like, maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. Like, I've forgiven these people. Like, this has been very traumatizing. Like, um, I mean, you can prove it pretty much by my Facebook feed. Like, literally, I had... I looked really healthy. I was doing really well. Um, and you could tell after the 14 days of coming out of that hospital, I hope my whole countenance was different. I was actually doing like 500 push ups a day before they took me in. And if anyone can, if, if somehow the footage can be subpoenaed or something for like while I was in the hospital, you'll see me doing the push ups in there. Uh, but what's so crazy about this is I was frustrated how I was being treated. I'm like, this, I shouldn't be in here. You know, and I'm a strong person. Like, I could easily hurt someone and defend myself. But I was like, I don't want to hurt anyone. Like, that makes no sense. Like, like, why would I want to hurt them? But yet, here they are hurting me. You know what I mean? So, I'm just sharing this because this is a very important subject. Um, I don't feel right by my uncle not talking to me anymore about the inheritance. I don't feel right about my younger cousin, Vince Brown, uh, blocking me off and people slandering my name and uh, giving me a hard time. And uh, here I am. I don't have as many friends in Bessemer, Alabama. You know, I might not know the legal system as well as some of those people in Clanton. You know, I might not be in the same circles as those people, but that doesn't give other people the right to beat me while I'm down and do what they did to me. You know, I'm not here to just point one finger at Margaret Ann. I'm not here to point one finger at the hospital or just one finger at Judge Allison Boyd, but that's a pretty messed up concoction you know, and I've reached out to other people and like no one has seemed to really care. And I'm finding myself sitting here like, well, I care, you know, like, so I'm just making this video to uh, document this digitally. And uh, if anyone feels inclined to reach out to me to help or ask questions, that would be great. Um, I've forgiven what they did to me, but it's just still not right. Like, uh, yes, I might not have the perfect memory. Yes, I might have some ailments, but that doesn't mean that you have the right to like lock someone up. Like, I'm sitting here taking care of myself and thinking of how awful that was what happened to me and how it set me back. Like that, that really set me back. And just to think that Judge Allison Boyd was like in a Zoom courtroom. Like I went as in a hospital and they literally like, I had a court session through a Zoom court meeting. So, you know, Jesus said, sell your tunic and buy a sword, right? Like, at what point does someone mistreat your rights so much to where you have to stand up for yourself? You know, police officers, right? They defend themselves with weapons when someone's coming to mess with their livelihood. At, at what right do I have to defend myself? You know, um, and it's just a whole psychological warfare. Like, how, this is not me slandering anyone else. This is me talking about what happened to me, <laughs> I'm not out going slandering. Slandering is saying, oh, he thinks he has a ministry. Oh, he stands on top of his van and yells. Oh, he thinks he can see demons in people. Like, these are the things they put on the petition. Um, not to mention the person that filled out the petition doesn't believe in the same way I do. So this is religious persecution. It's discrimination. Uh, there's motive behind it, the inheritance, okay? While I left Birmingham, Alabama, my older sister and other people in the room that were friends with my mom at the time got her to sign a piece of paper before she died giving my older sister the rights to sell my assets although i'm still supposed to get a third so what did she do she bought the house that i believe was a lower price than what it was worth and then she gave bubba permission to buy the land but that wouldn't have happened if i wouldn't have got baker acted illegally by margaret ann 
ran out of my own hometown. My mom was against it, by the way, and even hit my little sister because it was the craziest thing. When they put me in handcuffs, the three officers that came to, to grab me, not to mention, I was picking up a light that order, I ordered on Amazon at my mom's house. Like, I wasn't even like doing anything wrong. Like, I literally had a light come in because I got permission at the Lloyd's, uh, I got permission at the Lloyd's restaurant on 280. I walked in and the owner was like, yeah, man, you can do that. And I had like a little God loves you sign. It doesn't matter if people think that's crazy. Like you're entitled to your own opinion, but why do you have to put your hands on other people? You know, why do I need to go through some long court process to get all this, to get justice with this? Like I shouldn't have to do any of that. Like justice should be served regardless. And it's like, as soon as I feel like I have to stand up for myself, then other people are like, oh, let's see what you're doing here. And it's just the craziest thing. Um, you know, a lot of the things I go through, like getting my boat stabbed, like where's the justice with that? Like I call the cops, no big deal. You know, but I drive around in the dinghy and without registration and, you know, there's a ticket there. Or, you know, I get sucker punched at... Uh, on Singer Island, right? On camera. And I documented the time that it happened. And it was like, I had to take all this time, energy, and effort. I just was like, whatever. Like, I'm done with this. Like, I don't even want to give my time to try to get justice with this. But I could have smacked down the dude that did it to me, too. Like, I could have literally whooped him. But I withheld myself. I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to fight this kid. Literally, I think a miracle happened. Like, there was not even a mark on my face. But he hit me right here as hard as he could from behind, trying to knock me out. I didn't even hit the ground. I turned around and looked at him. And he was like trying to do all this, but he didn't keep pounding me. And then all the witnesses around me, when it happened, lied about it. They all said, uh, oh, we didn't see nothing. And then one guy threatens my life, says, you don't know how close to death you are. So, you know, I'm just making this for the record. The last thing I want to do is start a bunch of drama with my family. But it's hard to just not speak up about things that happened to you that were so brutal. Like, this feels really good, being able to let this off my chest. And it's like Eddie Birchfield, like he's my friend and I was doing, I met him, okay? I was already doing like these banners, like I was in Key West, like walking with a big American flag. I had already gotten permission at the Lloyd's restaurant to do sign language before I even met Eddie Birchfield. And Eddie Birchfield, he literally worked at the hospital, like going in there to like look at, to help people and minister to people. So this whole thing is a mess. And he goes, he went to Bessemer Academy High School as well. And that's where my father went. That's where my mother went. That's where my uncle went. Okay, so there's too many inner circles here. And y'all people that saw and witnessed this, like, are you just, do you think this is a joke? Like, do you think it was a joke that I got locked into a hospital? Like, is that a Comedy Central episode? Like, God bless you either way. I mean, I just, it's just crazy to see like such wickedness. And then not to mention, you think about Birmingham, Alabama. What do you see there? Like major pharmaceutical money major healthcare money, major money, major money in the healthcare department. And, uh, here I am like, Hmm, maybe God did this for a reason. Like maybe there's some changes that need to take place, um, there, you know what I mean? And I, and I'd be more than happy to put myself at risk to be able to at least voice the truth. Like that's what I live for. Like last thing I want to do is hush up and be safe all my life. And when I could have made a stand legally, you know, uh, I've never gone out and harmed people and put my hands on people. I'm a very strong person. Like, I got that, like, warrior in me. Like, when I go spearfishing, I, like, rip the heads off the fish. Like, but it's like, I don't put my hands on other people. So, like, what gives other people the right to put their hands on me? Not to mention, like, injecting someone with something when they don't want it. Like, when I first got taken to the hospital, I was like, y'all, I don't need to be in here. I'm fine. I'm taking care of myself. What are you doing? And I started getting louder and louder and voicing my opinion, not like threatening anyone, but no different than an Alabama football game, right? Well, they were like, bro, if you don't stop, we're going to put this medication in you. So uh, I just want to ask all the police officers out there, you know, people in the military, you know, what gives you the right to defend yourself? And I'd like y'all to explain to me my rights and how I can defend myself with force. You know, I don't have any plans to harm anyone else, but in the future... You know, if someone wants to put hands on me again and try to come after my liberty, my freedom, my peace of mind, my livelihood, I mean, my future kids, my family, like, I have the right to defend myself as well. And so obviously I'm doing the right thing by voicing this, but it's been almost, it's, this is, okay, so yeah, three years ago today, I was locked in that hospital, right? 
So think about this, like, not right what happened. And this isn't about a pity party, but it is about like speaking up and, uh, you know, keep your hands to yourself. All right. Like, especially when you're talking, especially when it comes to people that are trying to do the right thing and grow. All right. So I'd like some answers, especially from the people that are involved in the justice system in Birmingham, Alabama. That's important. So much love. Peace.